Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Creative Space, a podcast where we explore, learn, and grow in creativity together. I'm your host, Jennifer Logue, and today we have the pleasure of speaking with fashion expert and style director of Dressing Jane, Elisa Frederico. A lover of fashion and personal style from a young age, Elisa's career in retail and fashion spans over 25 years at companies like Aldo, Scunsy, and Urban. Today, through Dressing Jane, Elisa has become a salt after consultant, runway MC, and on-air expert, doing everything from personal shopping and closet merchandising to editorial styling. Welcome to Creative Space, Elisa. Thank you so much for having me. It's so good to be with you. Oh my gosh, yes, it's been a while. I know. But I've been following your adventures on Instagram. Okay, good. I hope you find it entertaining and informational. Totally entertaining <laughs> and informational. You're just this burst of life. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. So, and we first met, I think it was through Metro. Well, actually. Oh my gosh, you have this, oh my gosh your cover story. Alisa, oh, this is one of my favorite stories. This is so, this is actually an amazing story. You really, you are, you are breaking the forefront of athletes you're dressing, to be honest. Oh my gosh. Well, guess what? I've been, since you gave me those tips, I've been embracing it ever since. Yeah, <laughs> like, they're good. Pandemic, like, it's my go-to. I love it. Perfect. Yeah. I didn't even know it was a thing. You, you gave me the, the basics and like, yeah. Well, nobody understood it then, to be honest with you. Everyone's like, what is going on? Why are people wearing sneakers? What, what are these things that people are referring to as joggers? How do we wear them? Well, what do we do? So I think people were very confused and now everyone has actually embraced the trend maybe a little bit too much. So <laughs> yeah. we're, I, I'm ready to move on. Yeah, you're ready to move on. You know what? And I think I am too. It's time. Yeah. It's yeah. time to add a little more to my closet. Um, but let's get back to you and yes. your creative journey as a okay. style director, as a fashion maven. I got to ask first, what was your childhood like? Were you always this fabulous? Well, I appreciate you saying that. And if you ask my mother, she would tell you absolutely. Oh, <laughs> but, yay. Yeah. No, I mean, um, to find fabulous. I don't know. I've always been the same person who you, who you see. That's who you get in person when you are with me, whether you're a friend, a client. Um, I've always been really an extrovert and outgoing, um, you know, I'm a Taurus, that's my Zodiac sign. Uh -huh. And I'm like a Taurus, like through and through. So yes, I, I mean, I wouldn't call myself fabulous, but yes, I, I, I'm a little bit extra. So that's what you get. I love it. Well, I think you're absolutely fabulous. So, thank you. so when you were younger, what did you want to be when you grew up? So it's funny. Um, when I was really young, I thought I wanted to be an attorney. And then I realized how long you had to go to school for it. And I was like, yeah, no, I don't think I want to do that anymore. I, I love to argue my point and really like, you know, stand up for things I believe in and represent people. Um, but I don't want to go to school for that long. So I was like, let's scrap that. Then I decided that I wanted to work in elementary education. And I was like all gung ho. I was like, I'm going to be a teacher. That's it. This is my journey. Um, but I did always love fashion. Um, mm. uh, it was always in my blood. I, I always dressed up. I, my mom always, actually, when I was little, made my clothes, a lot of my dresses and gowns. And um, she actually, like all of her evening wear, she used to sew it. My mom is an amazing artist and seamstress. Wow. And my mom is like a jack of all trades. She could literally, like, basically do anything artist. I, she could just do anything, actually, this woman. But she really was my probably my first inspiration. Um, it's funny because not to get too long winded, but as a kid, I, I grew up, my family's from Philadelphia, but um, my immediate family, we grew up in Yardley, which is a suburb just north of the city, about 30 minutes. And mm -hmm. it was your quintessential, you know, uh, suburban neighborhood. And all the moms were, and no disrespect to the moms, but a little cookie cutter. Everyone was like sewing and doing all their things. And like, here was my mom with her ginormous hair and <laughs> <laughs> she was always so fashionable and her high cheekbones. And I was like, gosh, my mom like doesn't really like fit in, you know, like, but I, I didn't realize it until later. Like, actually, my mom was like, so cool. Like, and I just didn't even know it. Then I was like, Mom, you should wear flowers and polka dots. She was like, yeah, no, I don't think so. You know, so like, I don't know. I just, she was actually my first inspiration. I used to like steal all her stuff and dress up and, you know, do that whole thing. So I always loved fashion. 
that was always in my blood, 100%. I love that. I love yeah. it. Yeah. Actually, so, you know what's funny? I, I not to not to cut you off, but I think this is really notable. I used to write down all of my outfits in my daily planner so that I would oh never rewear the same outfit. Wow. And I would try it on the night before school. This started in probably middle school and carried through all the way to high school. I would never wear the same outfit twice. So it's almost like the first like chronicling your outfits of Instagram before Instagram ever existed. Oh my gosh, you were you were like <laughs> training yourself to be a stylist back then. Oh, you're practicing right putting outfits together and writing them down. A hundred percent. Like literally, if I found this the uh, planner, it would tell you ex- down to the shoe like what I was wearing on wow. that day. You mm-hmm. were building outfits back then. I lo- totally. Wow. Yeah. So, who are your early influences apart from your mom? Did you have any fashion inspirations? You know what? I actually as like silly as this may sound, I always loved Madonna. Mm -hmm. And I used to like draw a little Molon and I used to cut things off of gloves to like mimic her. I just love that she had her way of self-expression was that I don't really give a F attitude. And I kind of like was like, I don't really give an F either. Like I like this and I'm going to do it too. Like, so I feel like she was always like many little girls of of my generation. She was really like a a big inspiration, just doing weird things like skirts over pants, like just the non-typical way of dressing. And I I feel like I'm still like that actually. And her style, I feel like it just keeps repeating. You see younger generations pick it up. Oh, absolutely. I mean, listen, we're right now in the biggest like Y2K movement again. And it's like, I, I feel like my mom saying this of the seventies, like I already did that. I actually wore that. (laughs) And this time I'm like, wait, I actually wore that. Like, it's, it's cool to be able to actually say you did that the first time around. So it's like, we were the OG. Yeah, totally. Yeah. When did you know you wanted to make fashion your life's work? So up until um, probably 11th grade, I was gung ho going to be a teacher, but I always had a job in retail. So my first retail job was working at the limited um, at 15. And then I worked at, I don't know if you will remember this, Contempo Casuals. Yes. It was like, yeah, it was I totally like the remember trend, it. Yes, it was like the trend retailer. And then in 10th grade, Aldo had come to the U.S. And I, at that time, it was like the most forward shoe store. And my, my passion was always shoes. I loved shoes and accessories more than I loved clothes. I mean, equally probably, but anyway, then I started working for Aldo and I was like, wow, this is cool. Like the way they ran their corporation, the managers got to fly to Canada. It was like a whole thing. And I was like, huh, I was like, this is, this is awesome. And I kept working there all through 10th, 11th grade. And in 12th grade, they had made me a key holder. So that was like, I don't know if you know what a key holder is. It was like, a rung below the assistant manager. So here I was in 12th grade and I was like, they're giving me the keys to the store. I've got responsibility. Like I would go in after school and be like the closing manager basically. And I was like, I love this. I was, I was like, forget it. I don't want to be a teacher anymore. I want to, at that time, I thought I want to own my own store. I want to have my version of like Aldo, but it'd be mine. So I changed gears literally last minute going into 12th grade and was like, yeah, no, I'm going to, I'm going to make fashion my, my career. I love it. And what steps did you take after that? Well, funny enough at that time, and of course I'm dating myself, but not many colleges locally offered the business of fashion. I knew that I did not want to be a designer. That was not the route that I wanted to go. And in Philadelphia, you know, like textiles and more and university arts, it was only, it was just, if you were a designer, there was room for you. But the business of fashion actually wasn't really taught anywhere. Not, nothing like it is today. Now it's a really um, more available program. So I found, because I knew I wanted to stay in Philly at that time, the Art Institute of Philadelphia was the only one offering the business of fashion. So I like last minute applied. I did an over the top presentation, um, an application presentation to like make that, like beg them, like I'm a last minute, you know, can I come? And I ended up getting in and that's the course that I went school-wise. You started out working for other people. Do you want to talk about your career trajectory before launching Dressing Jane? Yeah, for sure. Um, And I think that to be honest, before anyone launches their own business, they should always work for someone else first. Like get your learnings and make your mistakes for someone else before you just go out on your own. Um, Again, if you love fashion, you should, my biggest suggestion is always to work in the retail business. So like, you know, 
I was mentioning, I worked on the sales floor. I was a manager. I came up all through college as a senior manager for Aldo. So really starting there, that was really, I think, the basis of my career. After I graduated from college and had left Aldo, I, I probably maybe a year or so afterwards, um, my first like real corporate position was at Urban um, Outfitters. And at that time, there was only 38 stores. We were located above where Anthropology is right now on wow. Walnut Street. Yeah, it was, it, was, it was great. But that was my first corporate job. And um, after that, I was there for two years. I moved to New York. I did sales. I was really trying to figure my path out because the job that I had gotten out of college at Urban Corporately was more um it was like an allocation analyst so you were partners with the buyers and i knew that it was a great experience it taught me so much but i knew i wasn't really like in love with that avenue and i was mm -hmm. like you know what i'm a natural salesperson i want to try wholesale so i had moved mm -hmm. to new york i got a job in a multi-line showroom in new york um which was great i love sales then ended up moving back to philadelphia and instead of going right back to urban uh Scunsey actually had offered me a position as um product developer, which was interesting because I hadn't done that piece of the business yet, but I was like, yeah, I could tackle this. Like I was always up for a challenge and to learn mm -hmm. something new. So I had taken this position as a product developer for Scunzi and it was hair accessories, mass market. Um, but what it did was gave me the opportunity to start traveling overseas. And ah. that really, I think what opened up my love of developing and designing product was traveling, getting into the factories, you know, having them make samples. Um, but within that company, because it was so small, I also got to touch a lot of different things. I got to launch their PR department, do all of their wow. events. Um, and, and that's the great experience you get from working with a smaller private company. You know, since, since then they've been bought by Conair, they're ginormous and huge, but it was an amazing ex experience that again, I touched and got to really know that I love product development. Then I went back to Urban Outfitters and I had stayed there uh, for probably another 10 and a half years, which was the greatest experience of my life, to be honest with you. I rolled out their entire private label department, um, wow. was like a one man show myself doing product development, pregnant actually, wow. <laughs> traveling, like, but, it, but they tasked me with it. They're like, we're gonna roll this out. If you really wanna do it, you're on your own. And I was like, all right, I'm up for the task. And I did it and it was, um, really one of the best experiences of my life, to be honest. Incredible. And I miss it dearly. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah. Well, they were lucky to have you. Yeah, oh, it was it was God. awesome. But you know, when you start having kids in a family, I think uh, the work-life balance shifts and it becomes mm -hmm. very hard to maintain a position um, like I had at Urban when you're traveling. Every, every three months, I'd be gone for two to three weeks overseas. So it's wow. just, you know, hard to maintain with little babies at home. Oh, so. yeah. It's time yeah. for a new chapter at that point. Exactly. And thus, Dressing Jane was born. Yes. Before we jump into Dressing Jane, yep. do you have three important lessons that you learned from working for those other brands? Um, yeah, I think, I think lessons that everyone should learn is obviously this is super cliche, but do something that you love. And that just goes back to my point of figuring out your journey. I knew that fashion was the path that I wanted to take, but kind of testing the waters and really finding where I belonged and what I was passionate about. Because it is so true when they say, when you love what you do, you're never working. Like everyone used to mm -hmm. say, oh my God, you, you never complain about work. Meanwhile, I had tons of things that I could have complained about, but I, I just, I loved what I was doing so much that it was, I was like, yeah, whatever, I'll, I'll handle that task and I'll put out that fire. But it's like, find what really drives you and what you're super passionate about so that you can really give 100% all the time. I think that's first and foremost. Um, second, when you're working for anyone else, um, keep, keep track of your value add to that company because mm -hmm. especially in this day and age where, you know, I was managing teams of 20 some people and everybody thinks they're an expert and everybody wants a promotion after six months. But you just got here out of college. Like if you really feel that you are deserving of promotions or whatever it is, Keep track of your value add. Yeah, people want to see managers, bosses, and that goes for me too. When you're lobbying for yourself, have a track record to say I've improved the business this much, or this was my contribution this season. Like, have hard facts and numbers. So don't just go in and do your job every day. You know, day to day type and do this. Keep a keep keep a file. Keep a mm -hmm. track record of your performance. 
so that you can really lobby for yourself to grow and, you know, move forward in another company. That's really smart. Yeah. All That's right. Really yeah. Smart. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you are. Oh my gosh. <laughs> And another thing, yes, I I really think that this generation that is so focused on Instagram and social media, um, you know, you might have success on social media, but do you actually have any life experience? Um, Get a job, get a real job in tandem with running your Instagram, because I'm not saying that social media isn't important, it totally is, but, you know, get a job and work in the industry you aspire to be a part of. Don't call yourself an expert when you've never actually worked within the industry. Like, do you know the terms? Do you know, do you know how to run a meeting? Do you know how to be part of a team? Do you know how to properly communicate? You know, there's so many young people these days that are calling themselves experts or they're calling them whatever, they're calling themselves whatever they want to, but at the end of the day, they've they've never actually worked and they're having success and maybe they're monetizing on Instagram, but what happens when that bubble bursts? Like, then where do you go from there? You know, and, and like I said, a lot of people don't even know how to write a proper, business communicating email, which is a detriment. Like if you're reviewing contracts or whatever you do, whatever you're doing, you just don't know how to operate or be part of a team. So get a J-O-B while you run your social media. That is be a even, tip. You'll be even stronger. You'll be beyond stronger. Like yeah. I think, you know, there's girls that I used to mentor that I helped get jobs when I was gone from urban. These are local girls who they're exactly what I said, go in as an assistant, learn the business, you be part of and, and do your social media at the same time. It's an oversaturated market social media. Mm-hmm. It creates a very false sense of success. And it's like, you know, one in how many girls really make it to like that level of like a Danielle Bernstein. It, it's not a ton. So have a backup plan is my point. Yeah. And the thing is, you're still in fashion. So you're winning exactly. anyway. Totally. So and who knows what the next social media platform is going to be in two years. Like it changes so much too. Yeah. Yeah. It's not, it's not where you should bank your money. That's what I think. I think it needs to work in tandem with having an actual real job also. So this is creative space. And I ask this question of everyone, but what is your definition of creativity? Oh, I love this. So I'm going to get, this is so cheesy, but this is a slogan that we had developed dream, imagine, create. And it's like, as, as corny as that sounds, that's creativity. Whatever you dream, imagine, create it. Like nothing is off limits, honestly. Um, you know, that's artistic creativity to me is being um, your most authentic self. Being, um, you know, I think individuality is so important. It sets you apart from whether it be competition or just whatever. I think being authentic, um, being a problem solver is a part of being creative. Um, because you've got to be able to think outside of the box. And although that doesn't seem like technically artistic creativity, that's business creativity. Mm -hmm. Um, So I think it really encompasses all of those things. I love it. Yes. It's multifaceted. It really, it it really is. It transcends everything. Yes. Like everyone has the opportunity to channel their creativity in in some way, in many ways in their lives. Um, It definitely goes beyond the arts. What is the creative process of a style director? So that's a great question. And it's funny because when you work for yourself, you can make up whatever title and name you want to have and, you know, Mm -hmm. style director. You know, when I started, it was with a lot of um, personal clients. And then I kind of um, evolved also, not evolved, but I was doing at the same time more editorial work. And I think whichever avenue that is, the, the first piece, the first step is to listen. You need to listen to whether it's your client or if you're on a job, listen, understand what their expectations are, understand what your deliverables are going to be, because giving direction, you can't just, I always tell people this, I don't just, I'm not going to dress you like me. I'm not going to make you like what I like. I want to make you the best version of yourself, or Mm -hmm. I want to deliver you the best, like on a, on a, on a shoot, I want to give you the best version of what you're expecting. So like, you know, there's generally an art director that'll say, Hey, here's our campaign. This is what we're doing. Then it's my job to interpret that and and give my personal spin on what that is. So I think the first step is always to listen, um, and make, you know, make a game plan for, for what those people are expecting. To reflect them, them, to bring out the best of them and their fashion. Absolutely. I've always wondered about what goes into building an outfit. Um, well, or what a look in, or it, well, here's a perfect example. So, you know, if I have a client, um, 
that's the first question then. What's your, what are, what are you trying to achieve? Are, you know, maybe you're interviewing for a new position. Maybe you're recently mm. divorced and you lost your identity. You know, mm -hmm. it's hard, especially in, you know, like this space where you're 40, you're like, oh my God, I forgot. Am I sexy? I don't even know what that means anymore. Like, you know, or, you know, you, you you're working at home. You're so used to being in leggings and sure. You're like, Hey, I want to get back out there and feel good about myself. So, yeah. You know, I think we need to identify what what are we trying to achieve? What's what's the look? So if it is that date night look, I want to give you the classiest version of what I think date night looks like. Or if you're interviewing for a position, um, you know, a promotion, I want to make you look respectable and powerful and really feeling your best self that you can go in and nail that interview. Yeah, because I watching a few of your segments, you bring in a lot of art theory. Mm -hmm. into your advice for how to you know layer things and i just find it so interesting it's like yeah. wearable art that's a nice way to put it i think um what i try to teach people also with dressing is every trend is not for every person mm -hmm. maybe the trend you know classic dressing never goes out of style and and if you want to dress that way absolutely if you're into trends great but every trend doesn't work for every person and i think that people really need to embrace this is always my first rule embrace your body shape what looks good on her body might not look good on your body, but you need to embrace it and feel comfortable. There's always something to highlight, no matter what your shape, what your size, there's always something fabulous to highlight. So let's take whatever those best assets that you love and let's highlight those and make you feel as confident as you can. Oh, that's so interesting. I love that. I yeah. love that. Everyone can shine. It's all shine. about feeling good. Exactly. Yes. And that's, that's the best part of doing what I'm doing now truly is to inspire people and women to make you feel good again there's nothing like getting dressed and you have a great outfit on and you're walking out hey you look great today or like mm. you know they in the office and somebody notices and they're like you look really good today like doesn't that just give you like a little like oh, all right like oh yeah you know you feel good about yourself i feel like a different person when i'm dressed up yeah everybody does you know? and it's like a little effort i tell everybody this a little effort goes a long way honestly you don't have to be like dripping in makeup and over the top things just a little effort you know instead of wearing a legging put on a little comfy stretch trouser or something different just something to to make it look like you made effort yes my hairdresser would always say there's no such thing as an ugly woman just a lazy woman <laughs> so. you know what you, your hairdresser is spot on it's so true it's so true everybody has the ability to look great yes if you want to make the effort or not it's you know, a lot of people when, when they have babies, it is a rough time after mm. like postpartum and a lot of women really lose themselves. They're exhausted, mm. they're sleep deprived, their bodies are changing, things are happening that you're like, where is this coming from? Like, who knows? I always tell everyone, do yourself a favor. The first nap of the day, put the baby right there, get in the shower, wash your body, put a little mascara on a little bit, change your clothes, get out of your pajamas. Like, even if you're putting on like, you know, a little cotton romper or a, a long maxi dress that's cotton, still comfortable, still breathable, but you changed your clothes, washed your body, put a little mascara. Mm. And, and it's just like, it's just like a breath of fresh air. It just that yes. little teeny bit of effort that could have taken you 15 minutes, but yes. it's like, it sets the tone for the day, you know? For sure. No, what you, you are what you wear. I believe it. That is something, you know, as an artist, sometimes I can get lazy with what I'm wearing. Cause I'm so wrapped up in like, you know, playing something at the piano or writing something. And like, I'm so in my head or like in the ethereal art yeah. <laughs> realm um, that like, I, I don't always pay attention to what I'm wearing. And some artists are really good about also extending their artistic energy to their fashion. Right. That's but, true. But I, you know, I definitely need a little push. Um, you know what? But something like that could be as easy as purchasing five really great basic items, you know, that you kind of just rotate in and out. And even though they're basic, they could be cotton, they could be silky, they could, whatever it is, it's easy to wear. It fits your lifestyle. That's the other thing. You want to do things that make sense for your lifestyle. It doesn't make sense for you as an artist to be in heels in a mini skirt. Like, <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? So it's like choosing things that are comfortable and make sense to you, but feel like, hey, I got dressed today. Hey, I made an effort. You know, just changes your whole mindset. For sure. No, it does. It changes the vibe. Like, yeah. and it makes the creativity flow more, I think. Um, do you consider yourself an artist? Because I, I do. I'm not yeah. sure what your perspective is on it. Um, 
I mean, I guess so. Yeah. Like, you know, for me, my family are, they're all like what I, I'm always like, they're real artists. Like they're painters and sculptors and really? like, you know, oh yeah. Like my, my mom and my brother are like just this crazy artist that I was always like, I can't do art the way they do. Like I, I'm not great at drawing. I get lazy with painting. Like I'm not an artist in that medium, but yeah, I guess fashion was always my, my way of, of being an artist. Yes. Okay. I'll accept that. I like that. I love I'm it. Artist. I'm an artist too. <laughs> yes, you are. Oh my gosh. Why is fashion important? And how do you think it affects our energy? Um, and we talked about this a little bit earlier, but I notice how much more alive I feel when I have a new outfit on, or if I put a little effort in as we talked about, but yeah, it, you know, a fashion is important because it, it is a feel good moment. It's a self-expression. It's, you know, also the way that other people perceive you, you know, I tell people this all the time, how you show up every day, if you've got coffee stains and you're wrinkled and you look a hot mess, people automatically think that's how you're going to deliver. That's the job that you do, like, you know, in a workplace setting, you know, it automatically says, oh, you maybe a little sloppy or lazy or whatever it is, you know, so even if it's a t-shirt, make sure it's a clean t-shirt, you know, the just little things that you can do. That's how you present yourself. That's how people perceive you, you know? And again, you, you walk taller when you're dressed and you're done and you feel confident. Like it, it is important. Fashion is important in that way. And again, you could, it's your form of self-expression also. Yes. You can literally wear your heart on your sleeve. You really can. And it's funny because, you know, fashion is, how you perceive it. It's not, I can't tell you if uh, I have an opinion, but that doesn't mean that my opinion is God's rule. And I actually respect people who are authentic. Um, mm. And even if I don't, if I wouldn't wear it when they're confident, they're like, yeah, this is my vibe. This is, I'm like, I like that. I'm with you. You know, even though I'm not going to wear it, I still respect that a lot. Yes. Cause they're owning it. They're owning who they oh. are inside and out. <laughs> And it's like that, your confidence, like there's, there's nothing cooler or sexier than confidence and, and people exude that. And you can always tell when you're with a confident person. And part of that is your style, owning your style and who you are. Yes. So after 25 years of working for other companies and becoming a mom, you launched Dressing Jane. How did this idea come about and what inspired you? Well, the idea what really came about because I, you know, was leaving the corporate world, I needed to have better work life balance. Um, and it started really just as a passion project for me, to be honest, I had a couple, you know, maybe like five clients. And I was I was, I was okay with that. I didn't want it any bigger, it was manageable. And it just started, I was like, you know, I want to help the women who, and this is where the name comes from, who want to be in fashion in step with fashion. They don't want to be fashion forward, but they just need a little bit of help and a little bit of guidance. Um, you know, maybe they're budget conscious, which I love because there's mm -hmm. nothing I love than teaching people that fashion doesn't have to be expensive. You know, oh, we can that. find whatever works within your budget. I will find that for you. We will make you look amazing no matter what the price tag is. So it, it started that way, but then, you know, it was almost like word of mouth. Everyone's like, oh, can you, do you think you can get me an appointment with her? And I was like, Oh, okay. Like it just, it kind of went that way. And then, you know, the same thing with the editorial stuff there, there's not a lot of editorial work that happens around here. There's more like commercials and, you know, pharma campaigns. So, it's, you know, unless I was willing to go to New York, there wasn't a ton of like fashion work in that vein. Um, and then the Fox thing, like they had invited me in house to do some consulting for on air talent. And they were like, one day, can we test you on air? And I was like, okay. So I like jumped into a segment and it kind of just all happened like completely organically, honestly. And then, you know, that just went from like being on like once a month, to every other week, to every week, a couple times a week doing this, working on this projects and I don't know, kind of just like exploded in that way. I love it. And you're natural. You're such a natural on air too. Thank you. I Listen, what I'm talking about feel good stuff and stuff that I know, like, if you put me on air and ask me something about science, I'd be like, um, I would have to get back to you on that. You know, like, I know it's like, I'm talking about fun, feel good things that I'm knowledgeable in. So thank you. But it's like what, what I know, I guess. Yeah. You're just, you're being you. Yeah. What have been the greatest challenges in launching Dressing Jane so far? Um, 
What have been the challenges? Well, just like everyone else, COVID really did a number on a lot of what I was doing. You know, obviously, um, the way people were investing in their clothes, completely different. You know, people losing jobs, not having that extra money to be able to pay a personal stylist. Um, and then for me, I was doing so many events and fashion shows, you know, between Bloomingdale's and mm. just all different things that COVID really made everybody shut down those marketing dollars and you're not able to event attend, um, attend events and stuff like that. So it really changed that aspect of what I enjoyed and was doing a lot of. Um, but it seems like it's on the rebound as of now. So thank goodness. Great. Yeah. Yeah. But I, I don't think, I don't think there's been many other challenges per se. I mean, I guess just like everyone else, when you're a one man show, mm -hmm. figuring out this whole social media presence and making the time and, you know, without it, you're lost. It's like your calling card. Like no one has a business card anymore. Models don't have headshots. It's like everyone goes to your Instagram. So really, I think that would probably be the biggest thing. Trying to figure out how to navigate that world is was was a challenge for sure. And had the time for it. Yeah, it's like a full. I mean, people have made this full time jobs, but yes. So yeah. Oh my goodness. What have been the greatest rewards so far with dressing Jane? Um, the greatest rewards are really seeing successes of my personal clients, to be honest mm -hmm. with you. Like one of my first clients who I just adore, she was going through a divorce, like wonderful woman from the main line. She didn't want to be that like cookie cutter, Lily Pulitzer, no disrespect to Lily Pulitzer or anyone who wears her, but like she just, she wanted to figure out her new identity as this new woman. And mm -hmm. it was so mm -hmm. rewarding being part of her journey as she got out there in the world, really rebuilding her confidence. I always used to tell her, you're like a little Kelly Ripa. Like you're this, she, but she had no self-confidence. She was yeah. like, oh no, I, I don't know. But I'm like, it, no, it's inside. We just have to get it out. Just Aww. trust me. I will lead you. So being part of her journey and watching her get remarried, have another oh. baby and have this fabulous life. Like oh. to me, that was, that was so, that was so incredibly rewarding to be honest. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Look how far fashion can take you. It's right, <laughs> yeah. but it's like, you know, being part of someone's feel good moment. That's yeah. what I love. And that's the whole reason that I really started dressing Jane was to help women feel good about themselves, help you find your voice and fashion. Um, that, that, that to me is the biggest reward truly. That's so beautiful. I love that story. Oh yeah. my gosh. How has fashion evolved over the last 25 years? Well, I think it's evolved greatly. Um, you know, we talk about athleisure as a great example. Whoever would have thought that sneakers, even jeans, like what is socially acceptable? Um, who would have ever thought that we would come that far? And, and, and just when I think about like the way corporately that people used to dress in a suit mm. and wingtip shoes, like, you know, even, even men, nobody dresses like that. Like, you know, you can work corporately. It's like, we used to tell people on interviews, do not show up in a suit. You will not get hired. <laughs> like, oh, wow. Do not dress like who you are. And again, that's a fashion environment, but just in general, like okay. the way that um, more casual dressing or even like, you know, I always talk about, look at how people are blurring the gender lines. I mean, mm -hmm. it's amazing to see the way that fashion doesn't have to be male, female. It's really so intermixed. And I think that's amazing. Also, we're going through a time period right now where it's all about boxy, unstructured, oversized. Um, so I love that. I think that it's become this universal thing. Oh, it's so cool. It's, it's so different from how it was just even five years ago. Absolutely. I, and again, I, I feel that athleisure really drove the bus on oh. how we've changed that because think about it. You've got girls wearing joggers, boys mm -hmm. wearing joggers. It became this, it's okay to be a little more casual or, you know, to be different from what was considered fashion. I feel like that was really the catalyst of, of, of that, I think. Start pushing boundaries yeah. and to yeah. get out of the boxes. 100% what doing what is not considered normal, what's not the norm is is really what I think it was about. So you're always offering fashion advice on air as well as on your social media channels for dressing Jane. Do you have any fashion advice for someone who lacks the time to really think about it too much? I think that uh, I tell everyone, make a plan. Like I just said to you earlier, just invest in some key staple pieces that feel easy to you and they don't feel intimidating and they fit your uh, your lifestyle and and just you know 
build from there. Make a little bit of effort. It goes a very, very long way. But like with everything, plan ahead. Like if you know you have something, plan for it. Or, you know, even like the people that I work with on TV, I tell them on Sunday evenings, plan your outfits for the week. Even oh. I, they don't all listen when I'm like, take photos, show, see yourself in it. Like, you know, that's, that's how I plan personally, but have your week all planned out. Like life is so chaotic, your closet and your fashion shouldn't have to be. So just simplify it. You know, if we know that in turn, it, it makes you feel good, mm-hmm. make a little bit of effort towards it. You know, it doesn't have to be crazy. It doesn't have to cost a lot, but just a little bit. And how about figuring out, you know, how you want to look like, how do you go about, I know in advertising, we use mood boards, mm-hmm. um, you know, well, just that's, to create a vibe. That's what Instagram has become, basically. Pinterest, Instagram, it's your inspirational and aspirational, you know, um, go-to, to be honest with you. It, it, prior to Instagram, it's like, it's so easy to be a cop. I don't want to say copycat, but it's so easy to find what you want to be or how you want to look because there's so many people of so many different styles putting it out there for you to access it's not just you know oh flipping through a fashion magazine and here's you know kate moss i don't look like her that would never look like that on me like finding someone that you identify with has never been easier to be honest with you i think that yeah i think it's right there at your fingertips you just have to figure it out and like i said before you need to embrace your body shape and what makes sense for you and your lifestyle and try things on try different things it's just like when you're wedding dress shopping try every silhouette on you you say you don't like it on the hanger put it on your body anyway just try you know so you yes. find what's comfortable for you and how about when you're trying to find like i know with your one client you talked about she was trying to find her new identity mm-hmm. um what kind of process was involved in that like how did she feel different looks out so what we, I would give her what we considered safe items. So it's what she felt was okay and safe. I would say, here's your safe items. Now you're going to give me three push items. So these were the three oh. outfits I said, and I want you to see it was building her trust. You know, she, I said, you have to trust me to lead you. I'm not going to dress you like me. I want to dress you of the best version of you. We want to be different, but that's where you're comfortable. So let's make it like baby steps. And what happened is I would give those three push items or outfits. She would wear them out and instantly people would say, oh my God, you look uh-huh. so cute. Like people notice when you're making effort, people notice when you're mm. being different, your confidence is different. And that's what starts to build your confidence. Someone will be like, wow, you really look great. That's so different. That's a great outfit you're wearing. Are you working with stylists? Where'd you get that? You know, they're asking and inquiring. So I feel like that it, it's a journey and, and leading and, and let, saying to people, trust me, please. Here's your safe, but trust me, give me, give me some room. And again, never going outside of someone's comfort zone too much. Um, but I think that's, that's a great way to start just testing the waters a little bit. Yeah, because sometimes you, you know, you pick something that's a little bit outside of your comfort zone, you're like, Oh, I, I could never wear that. But then you put it on, you're like, Oh, wait a minute, I actually, <laughs> I really mm. like this. Right. You just have to try. And, and the, th- the one thing is, though, if, if you are very uncomfortable or if, you, if, it's, if, if you're like, oh, I just want to do this trend, but it doesn't work, you, that's how you look. It looks so contrived and you look mm. uncomfortable. You're fidgeting, oh, no. you're pulling, you're, you know, like, well, again, it's what looks good on you and your body type is what you need to focus on instead of, oh, she looked so cute. I should mimic that exactly. Like you, 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 are, you have to make it your own. Yes. And feel good in it. Feel comfortable. Yes. So you can feel confident. Yeah. And that's the thing. There's always a way to execute that. You know, I have clients who are bigger busted and they're like, I want to wear that, but I could never go braless. Okay. So let's talk about some layering pieces. Do we put a sheer under it? How do we, how do we create the look for you, but for you actually for Uh, your body? So. Oh my gosh. So interesting. So what are the three most basic fashion rules you live by? like it first and foremost be yourself be authentic to you don't copycat someone else um you know dress for your body shape is so incredibly important and also build a wardrobe like invest your money in staple items like i spend a lot of money on shoes and handbags i love blazers i love everything but you can build such a great look around those investment pieces Mm. um and kind of pepper in those, maybe some cheaper denim, cheaper t-shirts, like all those kind of things. But, you know, invest your dollars wisely and don't shop outside of your budget. Honestly, it's, it, it makes no sense. And there is great fashion at every price point. Yes. I love thrift shops, especially I love in New York. Shops too. Oh my God. 
There's a new one that opened on the Upper East Side. You, you have to check it out. I'll send it to you. Yeah, I, I love thrifting also. It's so fun. Oh my gosh. If you ever want a buddy, I'm here. I'd please do. Some, you know, it's funny because like some of my favorite pieces are literally pieces that were my mom's, like belts. Like they don't, I know this sounds so cheesy. They don't make things the same way mm. that they used to back then. Like even like belt sizing, like belts are so much bigger because dressing went down like you know your natural waist is actually right here and from for most people it's your uh, smallest part of your body yeah. but if you buy a belt today it's sized for your lower waist towards oh. your hips so like if you want like a real waist belt you know you have a little vintage dress and you want to just yeah. add a little, a little belt it's like vintage belts are so fabulous for that reason you know yes yeah, because you don't have that like giant leftover no. part of the belt hanging over no yeah. because it's so the the way that that fashion was proportioned back then is so different th than how it is now it shifted oh my goodness yeah never thought of that yeah. um do you have any advice for aspiring stylists any advice yes i think this is just business advice in general is obviously um get out there and network um network all you can when when you're a stylist i think um offering to assist for free sometimes or you know contacting boutiques and saying hey like let's do a photo shoot you know putting your work on paper you need to build a catalog and show that you know what to do um artistically one but also getting getting if you don't have experience getting on set with somebody and saying like look i don't have the experience but i want to learn i'm willing to come in at a lower rate whatever it is so that they know that they're bringing in someone who needs guidance but mm -hmm. just really putting yourself out there um and 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 trying your best honestly and being inspired and keeping catalogs and you know build, building your own catalog actually of work start styling yourself i mean again that's a lot of what instagram is is your own like personal direction how you interpret fashion so put it out there just you, you've got nothing to lose at the end of the day oh my goodness and so many avenues now to so put yourself avenues. out there yeah uh, and, and it's like people are so afraid to put themselves out there because they're afraid, oh God, what if nobody receives this well? What if, um, you know, they, they, I get bad feedback? You know what? Who cares? If it fuels you, keep it moving. I love that. Oh my yeah. gosh. I love no, your confidence. Well, it's just, you know what? We get so wrapped up in, oh, did it, did it get a lot of likes or views or this or that? It, we can't, you can't live by that. Like mm -hmm. it's, if, if, it, if it feels good to you, that's all that matters. Just keep it, keep it moving. Keep doing it. Keep doing you. Just keep doing you. Yeah. What's next for you, Elisa? That is a great question. I don't know. I, I, I will tell you, I have been having the product itch for a long time. I would love to start developing products again. So who knows? Maybe I'll develop my own line. I don't know. We'll oh my see. gosh. Well, that'd be yeah. fabulous. It's a big, it's a huge undertaking, but it's like, I can't, I, I love, I really love products and I love building products and I miss it a lot. So I don't know, figuring out how I can make that work. Maybe, I don't know. That's what's on the back of my mind for now. Ooh, well, when you have that figured out, we'll have to have you back on the podcast <laughs> to talk about that. Perfect. For more on Elisa Frederico, visit dressingjane.com and follow her on social media at dressing underscore Jane. And thank you so much for tuning in and growing in creativity with us. I'd love to know what you thought of today's episode. You can reach out to me on social media at Jennifer Logue or leave a review for Creative Space on Apple Podcasts so more people can discover it. I appreciate you so much for being here in the beginning stages of this. My name is Jennifer Logue, and thanks for listening to this episode of Creative Space. Until next time.